All right, this meeting has been properly noticed and called to order. Uh, we will now um, move on to roll call. Chairperson William McCurdy. Present. Vice Chairperson Tick Sagerbloom. Commissioner Marissa Brown. Present. Commissioner Nancy Bruni. Present. Commissioner Carrie Cox. Commissioner Richard Churchio. Commissioner Valerie Craig. Present. Commissioner Michael Disman. And Commissioner Lashana Turner. A quorum is present and we are in compliance with the Nevada Open Meeting Law. Uh, thank you so much. We will uh, mark those members who are currently uh, absent as absent excuse and mark them present as they come in. Uh, we do have to pause and give a shout out to our very own Las Vegas Aces who secured uh, their back-to-back -back championship last night. Uh, we're looking to have a big party uh, on the 23rd on the Las Vegas Strip. Uh, be on the lookout for more details. We'll make sure we get that uh, sent out to everyone uh, so we can celebrate our two-time champions. Um, we'll now move on to public comment. Got a little bit of feedback. And Commissioner Turner is present online. All right, well, this is the first time set aside for public comment. This, uh, these comments are limited to items that are present on the agenda. Uh, if you do have comment at this time, we ask you come forward. We ask that you uh, state your name for the record, uh, and you will be limited to three minutes. If you would like to speak longer than three minutes, it will take a majority vote from this board to extend your length of time. We want to remind the public that comments that are uh, repetitious, slanderous, offensive, and inflammatory amounts to personal attacks or interferes with the rights of other speakers is not allowed. Any person who acts in violation of these rules will be excused for the remainder of the meeting. Again, uh, this is a time period set aside for items on this agenda. Please come forward, state your name for the record. Welcome. Commissioner Sagerblum is present. Good morning. Good afternoon. Mary Mitchell. I know you guys probably remember us. Hello. Um, my name is Stephanie Mitchell. <clears throat> We're back um, because our issue still hasn't been resolved. Um, my mother's still been looking for a place. She hasn't been able to find a place. She has some uh, health issues that has taken her a toll on her over the last uh, nine months. But we've been looking for a place for her. Should I uh, give this to someone? This, uh, and what item are you speaking to right now? Oh, I thought this was just regular public comment. Yeah, the second period for public comment is oh, going to be at the, at the end of the agenda. Okay. Oh, uh, we are, I do apologize. Okay, yeah. thank you. We ask that you do hang around and uh, get that in at thank the second. You. Sorry about that. No problem. Is there anyone else here wishing to speak in public comment on items that are posted on the agenda? Seeing none, we'll move to item number three, approval of the minutes. We have a motion by Vice Chair Sagerbloom, a second by uh, Commissioner Churchill. Is there any comment on the motion? Hearing seeing none, we'll move to a vote. All in favor? Aye. Anyone opposed? Any abstentions? Minutes are approved. We'll now move on to item number four. Uh, from my knowledge, uh, this item is, needs to be uh, amended to move the executive director's uh, report. What is the report? The, his review to the conclusion of the agenda. So we'll move that to the end of the agenda. Can we have a motion with that amendment? Move to approve. Subject to that amendment. All right. We have a motion by Vice Chair Sigerblom, a second by Commissioner Craig. Is there any discussion? Hearing saying no, move to a vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any abstentions? Anyone opposed? All right. Can you hear us? Motion is approved. We'll uh, have IT check into that. Move on to item number five. Uh, receive a report from our executive director. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and good afternoon, everyone. Wanted to highlight my report, uh, speaking of a couple of events that have taken place since we last got together. I wanted to acknowledge and um, thank the commissioners who were able to attend the National Association of Housing Redevelopment Officers um, annual meeting, which was held in New Orleans. Um, we went down, we commonly know, it's commonly known as NARO. Had an opportunity for a lot of educational activity, um, some tours to see how 
affordable housing is done in other parts of the country and just overall gut showing and and I'll, I'll tell you just feedback that um, that I received in general more times than not staff will go to these kinds of events it was very well recognized that our commissioners went and our commissioners went in numbers really speaking to the strong commitment that this board has to uh, to us this community and affordable housing. so I wanted to recognize and thank that Thank you for that. And we're going to have some follow-up. We're going to talk about some things that we're doing akin to what you saw, as well as some things that we're planning. I uh, also wanted to recognize staff for the who also attended this conference as well. In addition, uh, last week, staff and I um, sat on the, on the podium and gave presentation at the Housing Coalition meeting. And this is a culmination of houses here throughout the state of Nevada. And uh, both uh, myself, uh, Frank Safford, and others um, had a pretty predominant role, if you will. I want to thank our uh, staff from the HCV program who had a table set up and really talked and promoted the landlord liaison and landlord partnership that we're developing. I um, wanted to um, right now have uh, Paula come up. Well, before we do that, the FSS graduation. I think a few of you were able to make that um, clearly one of the, the most joyous times of, of, of my, uh, my career. We had a number of graduates, and I want to say we gave out close to $400,000 in escrow. And for the sake of the audience in our FSS program, individuals will, will be assigned a case manager. And uh, this is a five, sometimes seven year journey. And our, in fact, we have any of our case managers in the house? You all stand up and be recognized. Yeah, the, um, we're, we're, we're talking five to seven years of intense case management. You know, I, I have a job interview, and I'm not sure if I'll make it. And they'll get that phone call that says, we'll send you an Uber if necessary. But you need to go and, 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 and do what you have to do. Well, we, um, so as individuals go through this process, a part of their rent is put in an escrow account. And as I was alluding to, we gave almost $400,000 in escrow back to those individuals who had earned, earned that money. So outstanding effort and outstanding program. Uh, we, we want to now recognize Al Conklin. And I'm going to have Paula Tucker come up and tell the world who Al is and why we see fit to recognize them today. Good afternoon, commissioners. I'm Paula Tucker, the Director of Supportive Services for the Housing Authority. Today we're gonna to recognize Mr. Al Conklin. Um, he is the founder um, and CEO of Preventus Place. It's a nonprofit agency in the community that works with um, uh, actually three of our properties, the Ross, the Resident Opportunity for Self-Sufficiency Program. Um, he, um, his, his agency oversees Hampton Court, Simmons, Manor, and uh, Ernie Cragen. Prior to that, though, he was um, the Supportive Services Manager for the Southern Nevada Regional Housing Authority, and he was over our, we actually had two separate FSS programs at that time. One was under Section 8 and one was under Public Housing, but he also had the um, Section 3 uh, WIOA programs under his um, department, so he has really contributed to the success of our residents for a long, long time. And he's actually, um, you know, he's ending his uh, tenure at, at Preventus Place and with the Ross program, and those properties are going to be coming over to us. And then Johanna Bellew, our Ross coordinator, will be over those. But we wanted to take a, a pause here and to really thank Al for everything he's done. He's uh, impacted so many lives. I think Lee mentioned that he hired her, right? Woo woo! <laughs> So we're happy for that, and uh, so we just want to um, have him to stand and acknowledge him. Al, can you please? He does. He said he doesn't want to talk. So <laughs> come on up. Oh, 
I'm not much of a public speaker, but I really appreciate this. It's means a lot, and uh, and I I really feel I'm leaving it in good hands. Uh, I went to that banquet that you referenced earlier. It's come a long ways. Yeah. Because the guys are doing a good job. Your Ross program, Johanna, she's doing a good job, getting a lot of stuff done, and really proud of being associated with the organization. Thank you, Al. You planted some good seeds. Thank you so much. And Mr. Chair, to conclude my report, um, we, we talk a lot, customer service, uh, housing opportunity and resident opportunities. And, and, and with all of that comes a, a tremendous amount of need for partnership. And I'd like for Kenita Lewis to come up and talk about a, uh, a, a partnership that's coming before us shortly. And Kenita, tell, her, tell us how we got to know each other and the work you've done with us as well. Thank you, Tommy. Sure. Um, good afternoon, commissioners. It's so great to see so many of you again. My name is Kenita Lewis, and I'm the owner and founder of the Adenek Talent Group. Um, we were working with the Housing Authority. I remember sitting in the seat probably three years ago at my first board meeting uh, with Stan Quay. Um, he had been acquired by the Housing Authority and the board to conduct a search. And uh, I was supporting that effort. And um, luckily for us, we were able to bring on Mr. Lewis Jordan. So um, after that, uh, I was brought on to be able to help to support the HR group, specifically in talent acquisition. Um, there was just a lot of growth and opportunity with the Housing Authority. And they brought uh, my firm on in addition to another partner that I was with uh, just to help manage some of the requisitions and identify top talent um, to be able to come on board and make sure that the Housing Authority was heading in the right direction. Um, so with that, we were able to bring on Teresa Waters, who is now the Director of HR and continue to support uh, Mr. Jordan in his effort. In all of the strategy planning that we were doing at that time to understand where the current state was of the Housing Authority as it related to talent and growth, um, we also were looking at where we wanted it to go. And with Mr. Jordan's oversight, one of the things that he wanted to do was to offer opportunities to the residents. There are tons of people that come here today, including myself, to these board meetings to pitch their services or to talk about how they want to support the Housing Authority. Um, and included in that, a lot of times, there is an opportunity to give back and have the residents take part in that. So I contacted him. My firm has been um, uh, blessed to be awarded uh, a couple of opportunities to support the Super Bowl that's coming. So I have hundreds of positions to fill. So I am now partnering with the Housing Authority, and we're going to host a career fair where all of the residents will be invited to come so that they can um, be considered for those opportunities. So we hope that even though that this is kind of a one-time event, uh, my firm continues to grow. I hope the partnership continues to grow with the Housing Authority so that as we get in additional opportunities, we will be able to share those with the residents of the authority. So thank you so much for the opportunity. Thank you. And Mr. Chair, outside of the, um, do we have the pamphlets today? The pamphlets, the newsletter. Yeah, outside of the newsletters that you all should have received, that, that concludes my report. Thank you, Vice, yeah. Vice Chair Segerman. You had a question? Okay, all right. Uh, I did, I just wanted to ask, were you able to ever talk to the county and are you still willing to help us? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, we'll move on to section three, consent agenda item number six. I entertain a motion. Move to approve item number six. I have a motion I by Vice Chair Sagerbloom. Second the motion. Second by Commissioner Craig. Is there any discussion? Hearing saying none, we'll move to a vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone abstain? Anyone opposed? Motion is adopted. We'll now move on to section four. Item seven. Director Jordan. Thank you, sir. Um, since our last meeting, the following individuals have uh, are no longer with us. Um, um, Betty Davis, Joan Coleman, Mary Love, Wendella Johnson, 
Christina Bentoncourt, Paula Kellner, Alfredo Pena Arias, Frank Ringwalski, Robert Judd, Valentin Carrera Aguila, and also wanted to add uh, our, our June Fleming from our HR department. She lost her father this week. And so if we can just have a moment of silence for all of the departed. Thank you, Mr. Chair. We'll now move on to modernization and development. Item number nine. Good afternoon, Frank Stafford, Director of Development and Modernization. Uh, item number nine is the approval to award EJP Consulting Group contract number C23055 in the amount of $173,018 to assist with the preparation of the choice implementation grant application. Background, in July of 2021, the Southern Nevada Regional Housing Authority, in partnership with the City of Las Vegas, submitted an application for the Choice Neighborhood Initiatives Planning Grant which the Marble Mountain Housing Development was the center. The CNI is a two-year process with the goal of development transformation plan that will not only redevelop and revitalize the public housing development, which in this case is Marble Manor, but also a portion of the neighbor, neighborhood surrounding the development, which in this case is historic west side of Las Vegas. On November 22, 2021, HUD notified both entities that out of 32 applications from across the country, we were one of only eight applicants awarded the choice neighborhood initiative planning grant. The first draft of the transformation plan for the CNI has already been submitted to HUD, and we're in the process of fine-tuning it for its final submission. On September 6, 2023, HUD posted a notice for the Choice Neighborhood Implementation Grant, which announced approximately $256 million available for awards up to $50 million each to support those participants who have completed a comprehensive planning process and are ready to implement their plan. On September 28, 2023, the Southern Nevada Regional Housing Authority closed RFP number P23055 to select a consultant to assist the SNRHA with the preparation of an application for the Choice Neighborhoods Implementation Grant. There were two respondents, EJP Consulting Group and Nevada Business Consulting Firm. One person from the city of Las Vegas and two SNRHA staff members were selected to review each proposal. After an in-depth review of both uh, both proposals, EJP's proposal was selected. At this time, the Southern Nevada Regional Housing Authority would like to issue EJP a task order for phase one of their proposal in the amount of $173,018 for grant application management. Action requests is the Executive Director requests the Board to approve the award of contract number C23055 to EJP Consulting Group and the issues of task order number one in the amount of $173,018 for the preparation of the Choice Neighborhood Initiatives Planning Grant application, Choice Neighborhood Initiatives Implementation Grant application. I'd like to make that note of correction. Thank you. Are there any questions from members of the board? Commissioner Bruni. Thank you, Chair. Um, have we done business with EJP Consulting Group before on this sort of grant? Not on an implementation grant, but we have did work with them on two different tra uh, transformation plans, and one of those was Marble Manor. Okay, and um, have we had any conversations with Nevada Grant Lab about supporting any of our grant work? Nevada Grant. Grant Lab. It's a, a relative, well, I guess it's probably, what, two years old now, and it um, they support jurisdictions and entities go after federal grants. They were set up because they recognize that we rank 45th in the country in federal grants per capita. And so they will often work with jurisdictions and entities and agencies to write grants and they'll do it at um, sometimes um, at no cost. They have their own grant writers. They just told me this morning they raised 90 or brought in, they brought in $90 million for the state this last year. Um, so it would be great to connect with them because, you know, um, or have them submit. I'd like to say, if I may share. So I am familiar with them, Commissioner. I want to say when I first came on board, uh, one of the principals that I met, 
Uh, while, and I wanted to take a step back on your question regarding EJP, while we have not, first of all, we've never applied for an implementation grant. Um, I, I think that if we, if we looked at EJP's resume, they have quite the, um, the, the level of accomplishments in the HUD world in getting such grants. So I, I wanted to that to be known for the record. Um, they're probably one of the top two or three firms since this grant has been available. They have a, a, a very impressive history of receiving them. But I am familiar with the grant lab. And that is something that as we, because there's a lot of dollars out there um, just in general that we'll be seeking and we'll make sure we touch base with them again. Frank, any other questions? I just wanted to comment. Commissioner what, Craig. Uh, Mr. Frank did for me. I personally called him because I had a lot of questions. I'm just saying, by implementation and this and this and this and this. You know, and I just want to congratulate him because he took the time to explain it to me. And because uh, we have to be particular about how our money's going and, and the words, the way it's written. And I just want to say, whoa. And I would just like to add, like I say, even though I was familiar with Nevada Grant Lab, uh, this, this RP was a public solicitation. And I'm, I'm not sure if, if they were aware of it, but, you know, it was open to the public and they could have applied for it. Yeah, I think they just usually, res they don't respond to RFPs, they wait for, or they're just open to folks reaching out to them. So it'd be great if we could actually start a conversation with them to figure out how we can work with them. Because my sense just talking to them is that it might be possible to work on many more grants at a much lower cost. And they have a national team of grant writers that have expertise in going after HUD grants or um, Medicaid grants, et cetera. So again, just sort of a the bottom line approach. I understand. If there are no further questions or comments, I'll entertain the motion. Move to approve the grant application or hiring the EJP for the grant application. And I would just say that 173000 to get $50 million is probably not a bad deal. All Although right. I like your idea about we'll reaching out to this other people. All right, we have a motion by Vice Chair Sagerblum. Is there a second? Second. We have a second by Commissioner Disman. Is there any discussion? Hearing and seeing none, we'll take it to a vote. All in favor? Aye. Anyone opposed? Anyone sent? All right, motion is adopted. Item 10. Item 10, approval to utilize $1,219,976 from the SNRHA Development Fund Reserves to proceed with the development of Marion Bennett Phase 2. Background on this item, in October 22, Nevada Governor Steve Sislak and the Nevada Housing Division announced the first round of rewards for the Fire in the Million Home Means Nevada Initiative. The Southern Nevada Regional Housing Authority was awarded over $67 million in HMI and I funds to complete five projects, one of being the development of a second building at Marion Bennett Plaza. Bennett Plaza is a 65 unit senior development located at 1818 Balzar. Construction of the first phase was completed in 2011. The receipt of the Home Means Nevada funds, coupled with the Clark County Community Housing Funds, previously received the Southern Nevada Housing Authority now has, the month, has enough funds to finance the development of the second phase at Bennett Plaza. <clears throat> Excuse me. A development project of this size requires various preliminary services and expenditures that must be paid in advance of project closing. In order to pay these upfront fees and costs, the SNRHA requests board approval to utilize $1,219,976 of development fund reserves to set a revolving account that will be used to finance all the preliminary fees and costs. All the preliminary costs paid by the SNRHA will be reimbursed back to the agency out of HMA and I funds and redeposit back into the reserve account at project closing. Action requested, the executive director requests board approval to utilize $1,219,976 of development fund reserves to create a revolving account to pay for the pre-development costs and services needed for the development of phase two of the Marion Bennett Plaza. Does that complete your presentation? That's correct. All right, are there any comments from members of the board at this time? Can I just ask, Explain again. I think I know this, but so we're going to front the money, but then as we do the deal, the money comes back, so we can use it again. That's correct. We just we just have do a revolving fund on all of our tax credit RAD projects, where we pay all the pre-development fees up front, and then we 
build those back through the uh, through the uh, tax credit in this case, home and survival funds. Thank you. Any other questions from members of the board, either in person or online? Hearing saying no, we'll move to uh, entertain a motion. I make a motion to be accepted. We have a motion by Commissioner Craig. Is there a second? Second, second by Commissioner Bruni. Is there any other discussion? Hearing saying no, we'll move to a vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone abstain? Any opposition? Motion is adopted. We now move on to item number 11. Okay, and item 11 is, is basically almost a companion item. It's for the approval to utilize $1,595,446 from the Southern Nevada Regional Housing Development Fund and proceeds with the re, to proceed with the rehabilitation of Janice Brooks Bay Apartment. This item was approved on October 2022 when Governor C. Slack and the Nevada Housing Authority nurse announced the first round of awards for the fire in the million Home Means Nevada Initiative, which the Southern Nevada Regional Housing Authority was awarded $67 million to complete five projects, one of being Janice Brooks Bay. Janice Brooks Bay is a 100-unit family development located at 5201 Walnut Avenue. As Janice Brooks Bay is an affordable development, normally it would be ineligible to receive federal funds. However, the special conditions of the Home Means Nevada funds allow them to be util utilized on non-federally funded properties. This created an unprecedented opportunity for the Housing Authority to be able to use federal monies to perform much needed repairs and upgrades to one of our affordable housing developments. A project of this size requires various preliminary service and expenditures that must be paid in advance of the project closing. In order to pay for these upfront fees and costs, the Housing Authority approves to utilize $1,595,446 of development fund reserves to separate revolving account that will use to, to, to finance all the preliminary fees and costs. Action requested is that the executive director request board approval to utilize $1,595,446, I mean $1,595,446 of development funds reserves to create a revolving fund to pay for the preliminary costs and services needed for the rehabilitation of Janice Brooks Bay Apartments. Sorry, my throat's just a little dry today. <laughs> does that complete your presentation? Yes, that does. All righty. Uh, is there any discussion? Hearing say none, move to a vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Actually, yeah. we got to get a motion. Yeah. Is there? <laughs> I entertain a motion. I entertain a motion. We have a motion by Commissioner Bruni, second by Vice Chair Segerbloom. Is there any discussion? Hearing saying now, move to a vote. All in favor? Aye. Any abstentions? Anyone opposed? Motion is adopted. We'll now move on to the last item, uh, which is the executive director's uh, annual evaluation. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So good afternoon again. Um, I wanted to um, state that I'm going to, all of you have the full evaluation in, the, in your packet. And I pulled out a few slides that I wanted to highlight in the, uh, and, and so as we go through. But, but before I get started, I wanted to say that, um, I want to say thank you. I hired on just about two years ago. Um, I came in excited about uh, my experience and what I thought we could do collectively. And what you're going to get today is a culmination of almost two years of work that we accomplished. Now, some might say, well, what about that first year? Why, why didn't we stop and, and have an evaluation for the executive director after year one, which is what contractually is supposed to happen? And uh, I, I can remember going to board leadership and saying that we had so much going on that there was no way in the world that my focus could potentially be on me and evaluation versus what we needed to do for the organization. A couple things that I'll highlight now, um, we're in the middle of a comp and class survey where um, if you remember, we hadn't given raises to employees in over seven, almost seven years. And there were some things that we needed to do, or as a leader, I needed to do to make sure that we, we corrected that. Uh, we were successful in signing a, uh, a MOU with the bargaining unit 
that looked at how we treated promotions and raises and things like that. So I, I just wanted to say for the record, this is not a normal occurrence. You know, it should be every year as our employees are evaluated every year. Uh, so that, that's where we are. So over the last two years, uh, I'm proud to say that, you know, the team and I, the team and I have worked to, towards some key goals, stability, vision for long-term sustainability, additional funding, customer service, and really working on, on our reputation. When I hired, I just let's go back. Yeah, right, the one I'm seeing two different things. Yeah, that's the one I want to see. When I hired on, um, you know, those, those of you who were on the, on the interview committee made it very, very clear that these are the directives. Improve our brand image, improve communications, particularly among the board, HUD, uh, the Office of Internal, Gen uh, Internal General, uh, county agencies, media, landlords, everyone. We had an issue with communications or perceived issue. Um, and that those were clear directives, improve service delivery and improve work, workplace satisfaction and engagement. Next slide, Jessica. Uh, I, I came in hoping to, to, to launch, and I think we were successful in establishing a vision of a vision that I brought in, but I think now is a shared vision among us all. And we talk about that vision and those pillars of success every single day. So anyone, anytime in the organization, if you ask a question, what are they working on? It should have something to do with customer service, service delivery, increasing housing opportunities, enhancing resident opportunities, and just fostering a stronger relationship. And while it says with HUD, it's really fostering a stronger relationship in general. If we have a good partner network, as evident today, with the potential work with the Super Bowl, as evident today with the work that we've done with Al and Preventus Place, if we have a strong working relationship with our partners, clearly we can provide better opportunities for the tenants we serve. Under housing opportunities, and again, we just mentioned the fact that $75 million from the Homies Nevada Initiative and if I could take a marker where it says 300 new, newer rehab units, I would put at the beginning of that 300 a minimum of 300. You know, um, as we look at goals for the upcoming years, for the first time, we're going to really explore this notion of mixed income housing. That money from the governor's office or from my home means Nevada was for 300 very low income units. We're looking at the possibility of creating moderate and market rate units to that mix and also somewhere in that process looking at the possibility of actually consolidating our offices into one building and potentially having that building as a part of office, housing, and commercial. You know, again, just so that, so that we can continue to build in a partnership. Um, under uh, housing opportunities, again, the $75 million, um, uh, promoted the need for increased fund, HUD, HUD funding. Um, a year, almost a year ago, we held our first affordable housing um, uh, summit, if you will, bringing people from all over the state and the country together to talk about this great need. And it's an ongoing, ongoing uh, conversation with our partners at HUD and our, our federal delegation around the need for us to get more vouchers ongoing and we'll continue to do that. Um, we opened up our wait list and collect, and we opened up our wait list, and I'm, this is one of the things, one of the many things that I'm so proud of. We uh, opened up our wait list, had 27,000 people apply. We uh, asked two questions that normally are not asked. Would you like? a job opportunity or would you like training and development? 19,000 people said yes to those two questions. And right now our team is working with our partners at Workforce and we're trying to cipher through those that said yes to see what kind of opportunities we can direct them towards. Um, the, uh, Frank just mentioned the um, um, submittal of the Choice Neighborhood Initiative and, and I think it bears, it bears noting that normally when you do a, a um, 
planning grant, it's like a year later that you actually go for the implementation grant. We felt so strongly about our planning grant that it was worth taking the time and because this implementation grant was made available, we're going to apply now and I'm going to, you know, we're going to, we're going to get it. But in the case that we don't get it, we'll learn from what we didn't do and we'll have an opportunity to apply if in fact it comes out in 25. And that was another misnomer. When we made the decision to go after this $50 million, I mean, we see what's happening in Washington right now. There's nothing that says that this grant will be available next year. But planning, collaborating, and partnering brought us to this place. Um, we uh, relaunched our emergency housing uh, voucher program, and that's a c collaboration we have with, Cl with Clark County, and we're doing an outstanding job in making sure that we're addressing this homeless situation. Uh, honored our first time home buyers. Next slide, please. Here again, I mentioned this, um, the, the um, affordable housing summit we had. Uh, the landlord partnership, one of the key factors to our success is working with the landlord community. And we, uh, we launched the landlord partnership. We hired an individual that we call the landlord liaison, making sure that we're working directly with our landlords so that they understand the value in providing choice for families who have vouchers. And then the final piece there, I'll go, but there you go. Uh, this board approved the ability for us to start a, um, a Sonara maintenance apprenticeship program. And in addition to just the um, apprenticeship program for maintenance, we're going to expand that to make sure that if, if and so individuals would like, they have an opportunity to work in the trades as well. So again, a place I would put a little asterisk and say not only maintenance program, but trades program as well. Address resident participants' concerns. Uh, you know, we, we, we did a uh, customer satisfaction survey. I was very, very assured that I couldn't figure out where we're going if I couldn't understand where we are. We did a survey. We'll talk a little bit more about those results later. Another big accomplishment. Um, and, and I want to be clear, we're not quite there. But there was a time that when you called in, the uh, whole times were atrocious. They're so much better now. And we're, you know, we're, we're working towards that goal. And, and again, as a part of our efficiencies to make sure that people aren't on hold for 20 and 30 minutes at a time. Under uh, participants' re relationships, uh, I know we've talked about it, but I'm pleased to say that we finally are open five days a week. If you all recall, we were open Monday through Thursday, 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. We are now open Monday through Friday. We have, and, and I'm looking at faces. No, we, we haven't sent out a big blurb on it because we're using those Fridays for appointments and things of that nature. Even at our properties, we have a process in place. And I like to call it a soft launch we've done. And eventually, we're going to have the full launch. But to improve service delivery, we are open five days a week. And that's, a, that's something that that I recognize coming in the door in order to better serve our customers, we needed to be more available. Next slide, please. Again, under uh, addressing those concerns of residents and, and just meeting residents where they are. We've had over 100 community events. Uh, we've improved our security presence at property, our security presence on properties. And if you all recall, we applied for a $250,000 safety grant from HUD, and we were awarded that grant. Um, we have the newsletter. Uh, and, and one of the things that when, when staff and I first talked about the newsletter, my natural apprehension was, OK, we're going to start this. we got to keep doing it. But will we have enough stuff to put in so that you know, we're not showing you the same picture of Lewis in March, and it's now December? Uh, staff assured me. And as you see in your newsletter, there's enough activities going on every single month to highlight the work we're doing to you know, promote the day-to-day uh, the, the -day operations and working with our, our partners, which are residents and staff. 
the uh, improve employee relations, you know, work diligently to improve relationships with staff. Um, I talked about the, uh, the MOU that, and the, uh, comp and the salary and uh, comp survey. Again, ways in which we stronger build stronger partnerships, and I'm, I'm very pleased that the team uh, worked diligently toward those things. Um, you know, one of the things that was brought to my attention, while I mentioned that we hadn't given raises, We've, we gave COLAs, you know, and the average COLA was 2.4, 2.5%. And after we gave a 2.5% COLA, we hit employees with a raise in insurance premiums. And it's like, okay, Lewis, why are you going to give me money in one hand and then take it away with increased uh, um, premiums? In 22 and 23, while we gave those COLAs, we were also able, the agency absorbed the cost of increased insurance. And trust me, insurance went up. But again, just as a means of saying, how can we continue to build those relationships and, and make this the premier place for people to work? We increased our training opportunities for staff, and a lot of automation has happened over the last couple of years. Um, we're still working on our performance evaluation tool. Um, again, increased training and opportunities. And we've, we've, you know, Kanita mentioned when she came up, um, we've done, we've brought in new people, we've put existing people in new positions, but it's all about making sure we have the proper fits to move the organization forward. Um, streamline agency operations, you know, strengthen our relationship with HUD. Uh, we have court, we, we gone, we've gone to quarterly meetings. I think the chair will acknowledge there was a time that once a month we were on the phone talking with HUD about some of the things that they thought we needed to better, and we did too. We, we concur with some of those things, but those, those conversations aren't as frequent because progress has and continues to be made. This just speaks to uh, technology. I mentioned the surveys. For all of the surveys we've done around customer satisfaction, um, service delivery, safety, work orders, communications, at this point we, still ha we have a 75% customer satisfaction base. Is that where we want to be? No, we want it to be higher. We, have, we truly have room for it to be higher, but at least we have a baseline. At the end of the day, all of the partnerships, the collaborations, the working well together, those are all great things. But do we have the, the financial backing to support that? And the answer is absolutely yes. You know, these are some highlights from our, our last audit. You know, uh, we've increased our cash by $1.2 million. We haven't had audit findings in over two, ye in two years. Next slide. Uh, no material weaknesses, successfully manage uh, multiple corporations. And when I say that, we are a regional housing authority. We're not just the, the Las, Las Vegas housing authority. We manage a, a robust voucher program. We manage a robust, robust public housing program. We've transitioned into this new world of RAD, and we have a affordable program. Those are four really distinct programs that I'm proud to say the team manages and manages well, particularly financially. Project-based vouchers, that's something that we hadn't done a lot of. We issued an RFP for 200 earlier uh, last year. We had 700 respondents, and now we, we're going to put out another RFP for our project-based vouchers. Again, this gives us an opportunity to create more housing choices for those families that are on our list. Speaks to, again, the uh, financial, um, financial responsibility. Um, we've submitted a $100,000 grant to focus on mental health issues. We also submitted a $4, a $4 million job plus grant to look at um, providing employment opportunities throughout the west side of our communities. In conclusion, this is who we are and what we do. You know, as, as executive director, I serve at the pleasure of the board. I serve as a spokesman for the organization. 
lead, manage, and accomplish the work of the organization, define the tactical how to establish a strategic vision, and understand and take into account the interests of the constituents and the stakeholders we serve. So the highlights of the last 18 months demonstrates as follows, and particularly a desire to build a strong and better Sonara. And I think that's it. I want to say again, thank you all for the, the support and leadership. And um, I'll turn it back over to you, Mr. Chair, if, if there are questions. Thank you, Director Jordan. I can certainly say that um, we are much further now. Uh, we're much further than what we were when we first met and where, when I first came onto the board, uh, and, and it shows. Uh, but I'll pause my comments and ask the members of the board, are there any questions, comments, concerns? Uh, I guess my first question is actually for you, Chair McCurdy. What are we looking for? What are our options today to do? Um, and I guess there's some con confusion because the anniversary, I guess, is January of 2024, and so we're required within 90 days of that anniversary to do a performance evaluation. So I don't know if we're deciding on the process today or we're taking a vote. So just maybe knowing what our potential options are would be helpful because I don't want to get ahead of myself. And as it relates to the contract, I'll actually defer to legal counsel to speak to where we are within the time frame uh, within the contract. Certainly. Good afternoon, uh, commissioners. Good afternoon, chair, vice chair. Article 5 of the uh, contract with Mr. Uh, Jordan provided the 90-day window that you're speaking of, Commissioner Bruni. That 90-day time period actually passed virtually a year ago. So we were obligated to put, put this together within 90 days of January of this year. So option number one, do your annual review of that first one-year period of time. Option number two, you could do that year in the last eight, uh, eight months with the intention of any benefits for, the, for this 2023 not taking effect until 2000, January 2024. But then if you didn't go with option two, then you'll be right back here putting them on notice for the next 90 days and having to do another one by January of 2024. So it just depends on what the board's inclination is. Uh, I don't know if you want to go through another slideshow within 90 days because it may be in some form repetitive or duplicative of what we just went through. Um, and as, as much as we all love seeing the accomplishments, it certainly takes time away from the board's other uh, operational uh, obligations. So plan A could be one year, plan B could be both 2022 and 2023, uh, avoiding having to do this again in about 90 days. So I, it sounds like we have to make a decision today and I just, I'll make a, I guess a comment and then a question or maybe two comments. So I, I, there's a lot of information here. So I, I'm pretty new. I think I'm one of the newest members to the commission. Um, and I, but I think I can, based on what I've, what I knew before and then just all the great information, um, you've done an incredible job. There's a lot here. I guess what I'm struggling with is I don't feel like I have enough information about what the different amounts are or what the potential options are in that I actually have no idea what your salary is. I don't know what the comps are. I don't know what historically we've awarded to executive directors as a bonus. And I think I'm a, I'm a data person. I've been an executive director. I've managed people. And so for me, I don't know what 100 community events means for you when I have no idea what happened last year. Was it 99 community events? And so just having a baseline of data to sort of be able to measure growth would be super helpful. So I have no idea how to understand the numbers because I don't know what it looked like before. And I so moving forward, I would like to ask, if you look at the annual review, section five, Set evaluation elements will be measurable and attainable. Set objections will be provided prior to the date. The last um, sentence, you know, we have to decide whether the executive director has met performance goals. I don't see any of that information in our package. And so maybe we decide on something today, but moving forward for the 2024, the next evaluation, I would like a very formal 
um, document where there are very clear metrics about what the baseline is, what the expectation is for the performance. So. Yes. So the actual measure, thank you. The actual criteria for determining performance was actually an obligation imposed upon the board. So that's something that should have been done 90 days prior to the first annual uh, evaluation. So what you're saying, Commissioner Bruni, is well taken. That's something you can do if you want to uh, do the second year in January of next year. The board can uh, actually determine those uh, evaluation uh, guidelines or criteria and then use that for the performance evaluation in 2000, for the 2024, which will be effectively looking at 2023. What I will tell you in terms of uh, numbers, built into Article 5, there's some guidelines in terms of bonuses and raises. And that's in the latter part of, of Article 5. So I don't know if you have that in front of you. Yeah, it just says up to 10% of for a bonus, but uh, I don't know what our poten the potential is for a base salary increase. So that's the only number I have in this. And, and that's within, of course, the sole discretion of the board. I would suggest that having represented a few housing authorities, uh, certain ways of evaluating uh, an executive director, you know, FAS scores, CMAP scores, things that Mr. Uh, Jordan has displayed through this slide presentation. Those are, I would say, typical ways of evaluating the performance of an executive director. So you've been giving, given a lot of the information, but if you wanted to look at something more uh, from a formula, uh, if you're looking at FAS scores or CMAT scores, uh, you could do that. I will tell you that part of the latter part of the uh, slide presentation, which involved the financial information, that's typically a very good quantifier of how well your agency is doing. When you have no audit findings, when your, uh, your discretionary and non-discretionary funds are what they are here, that's typically, uh, I would say, the earmarks of how well you're doing, in addition to all of the community activity you've seen in the slide presentation. So you can use that, I would suggest, for this evaluation period. And if you want something more clearly defined, then the board, the chair, the vice chair, yourself, uh, you could put together some type of uh, measuring tool. What? Go ahead. I, I, I would just like to make a comment. Uh, first of all, since I've been here, which of course is for you, and I have a tremendous amount of administrative experience, okay, particularly with, with the federal government and the state government. I think that I've watched this commission at the helm of our current director moving and moving. I've watched them have to, to set aside non-productive issues, non-productive persons, which is a very difficult thing to do and a tremendous challenge. Now, I think that as this region grows, we have to have an aggressive person who knows what the hell they're talking about and what they're doing. I think that I've watched our director come into an unbalanced organization and make a commitment to bring all the staff, all our employees up to date. I watched them solve the problems of persons that have been working here for a long time and see a new person come in and uh, right up over them financially. And, and work hard and get completely absorbed in the commitment personally as well as professionally to balance that out and to make it fair, to make a person want to work here and feel the benefits here. Now, keeping all that in mind, we're in a total competitive situation. We have a person that's producing for us, then you know, we're not gonna be able to just sit back on our butts and watch uh, this gradual concern for our director when there's other places that he could certainly go that are beginning to nibble. I would hate for us to lose someone that has fits right in, that has built the network for us and with us to make us extremely productive. If we're going to lean, lean at all on any kind of an edge, 
I would lead toward the edge of solving the problems, letting our director know that we're motivated to bring him up to par as he has worked hard to bring everybody else up and to get us at an even level and an even playing field and then bring in any kind of extra safeguards or what have you that this, this commission would decide at that point. But I think he needs to be brought up so that we, we are not waking up one day and find out that somebody has made him an offer he couldn't refuse. And he's gone, you see. And uh, because right now I think that if you compare <laughs> salaries, then I think that uh, he's in a situation where uh, coming in was off balance from the jump. See, so I just think that uh, we need to take that under consideration because I'd hate to see us lose it. I'd like uh, to say something. Excuse me, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You want to recognize? I, would you recognize me, please? I have Commissioner Bruni, and oh. then we have Commissioner Craig. I don't disagree with anything you've just said, but that's my point. I don't have the comparables of looking at what do other <sighs> – housing directors with who govern authorities our size like what do they make what do our other city managers like you know a couple of us have to weigh this salary versus our own city managers and because we answer to also a different um, set of folks and so again I'm a I like to make da uh, decisions with data and I feel like I don't have any data so I don't know what the right salary is because is is it um, where is it misaligned or is it misaligned? So that's all I'm asking for to feel like I can make a decision. And I, and I definitely appreciate that. All right. But because so of before your lack of exposure, kind of makes Commissioner it almost Disman? punitive. Commissioner Disman? I'm sorry. I just want to make sure we, we maintain decorum. Right. I, I that yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, it's good. She, she was. But I just want to make sure everybody gets their yeah, piece. Uh, and then we can come back to you, Commissioner Disman. Uh, we have Commissioner Craig. I just want to say before I go into mine, I'm so excited Mr. Disman is saying something and he's saying it so logically and so soundly. Kudos. The other thing I'm looking at is your question is admirable and then maybe when it's time for an evaluation next year, maybe we can do that. Because the only rubric that we have, because since I've been here three years, they have come and gone and come and gone. This man, the truth is, he's bringing stability to the organization. I got a master's in health information informatics in grad school and I had to write computer programs and I had to deal with computers. And then when I came in here and then I, you know, I, I have clerical skills. Our clerical system sucked. Customers were not very happy. They complained quite a bit. And I saw a lot of things that were going on that this man has done and he did not pay me to say this. I've seen it. I look at some of the employees that come here. I look at their faces. Yes, I look at your faces even though I talk a lot. And I notice none of the employees are leaving or they're not frowning, or they're not making a vacuous face because we're addressing some issues that are here. This man came into a place, he came into a burning house. They gave him a water balloon that had holes in it, and they told him to put the fire out. Now, my point is, anybody else, at least I would have left. However, this man has been steadfast and continuously working. I've seen a change in administration. I like how, I'm going to tell you some things I've been impressed with. Him putting public housing together with, you know, with the other type, with the other housing, because there are problems that are not understanding. When there's been a problem with personnel, Rather than getting rid of the individuals that are personal, he's bothering somebody else can help that person in personnel do a better job. He's giving people a chance to improve and do better. He's not perfect. And I'm going to tell you one thing I know you all in the audience should like. Lots of, when I first came here, people were complaining about what was going on in the housing authority, and the problems were not solved because we on the board did not know about it. I will say now that when there's a problem, we talk and we get to discuss whether he solved those issues or not. And the other thing is, there's an issue with homelessness. This man, and he's human, I gotta say, he hasn't paid me to say this. He's human, he's made mistakes. But you know, the good thing about all of us, we make mistakes, but do we not get better? If he's made any mistakes when he came in, I've seen this man try to improve. And that's what I like. He's made a change. He's come to different public housing to introduce himself. So my point about it is, okay, next year we can do all that. But right now, he, he deserves it. He's earned my respect, and I'm not an easy person to, to, to please. I like it. That's all I got to say. I'm Valerie Craig, and I approve this message. All right. Um, we're going to go with, uh, I think, Commissioner Disney. Then we're going to come back to Commissioner Churchill. And then we have a comment from legal counsel. 
And then Commissioner, okay. Vice Chair Segerblum. I can't rival the, the, the final <laughs> remarks that uh, you made, Valerie, but, but what I'm trying to get across to you is that I don't feel that we can allow your lack of exposure to the commission because you came in late to become punitive. And that's what it is, you see. Because you weren't here at the time these accomplishments were being addressed effectively, I don't think that should have any bearing on whether we delay or go forth in this decision. I think that those of us who have been here and watched, you see, and are astute enough to know the competitiveness of the position and have watched the complete change, and when you work as, and, and you, you're an administrator, have a lot of experience, you work hard to build around you a team that can function and function well, that know your goals and objectives, and are willing to go out on that limb with you and change things for the better. You see, it takes time to bring that in. You have to watch and experience different individuals to see if, if you can get them all on the same team with you to accomplish the goals that you want to accomplish. Now, he's gone through a lot of that and continues to do that and has a team that he feels pretty strong with. I've witnessed the team. I have always agreed with every aspect of the teams that he's put together, but those are his teams. Those are the persons that he has put together that function for him. It's a great team now. Every one of them that's at that media team is hand-picked and, and put in place, and here we come. And, and I know you don't mean it like this, but it sounds so punitive that because you weren't here, and I can understand your position, but because you weren't here, that that should delay or penalize in any way, shape, or form the accomplishments he's made. So while he's been in the business of, of getting everybody else up to par, I think we should be about the business of bringing him up to. And that's, you know, that's strongly my feeling, and I definitely understand where you're coming for. Now, as Valerie said, I think now, in planning for the next cycle, that's when I think that your endpoint becomes significant. And that's all I have to say. Commissioner Churchill. I don't know how I could top that. Uh, I find myself in the same boat as uh, Commissioner Bruni. Uh, very clearly, um, and I said it when I got on board when I took over Councilman Black Spot here in North Las Vegas, um, it's a real privilege to be on this board. You know, we're on different boards where you go to a meeting and you just go to the formality of it and you go to first open session, vote, 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 go to the last open session, and then you're on your way to wherever you came from. Uh, this is a lot more than that in between. These are people's lives and everything that we're dealing with. Um, uh, to me, listening to my colleagues over here, um, I agree with both sides of the issue. Uh, I'm not necessarily a numbers person, but I definitely understand what you're saying, Commissioner. Um, I know from dealing with, uh, with Mr. Jordan, um, he answers my emails and calls very timely, which uh, I find exceptional. Uh, he explains what's going on. He briefs in between uh, the meetings, uh, at least with me, and I'm sure he does with everybody. Um, he has a sense of caring for the employees and for the people that uh, we all represent here. Um, so, I, again, I, I don't want to, I'm a big animal person, so I'm not going to say the word beat a dead horse. <laughs> but, uh, uh, you know, I think that if we're going to do anything over here, I think we should do the, um, the previous one uh, and separate the next one to the first of the year. Uh, this way we can get those numbers that we're looking for because I think that that would be, you know, that would be very important going forward. I understand exactly what you said, and, and that's very nice that you didn't take your, your uh, requested, uh, you know, pay increases when you just got on board. I will tell you, though, I heard an awful lot of horror stories, you know, you know I didn't just land on this planet, you know. So uh, I, I could see just by the employees and, and by my colleagues over here that uh, you're definitely going in the right direction. So I'll kind of take my, my lead from my colleagues over here and, and agree with if we separate them out, you know, uh, that would be okay with me. Thank you. Anyone else? 
Commissioner Brown, Commissioner Vice Chair Segalo. Thank you. So um, my understanding is that, that the current salary is about $250,000 a year, which frankly in Las Vegas is, is high. Um, and I don't know how that compares around the country. Um, I know how it compares within the county, and that's high. Um, but it sounds like our, under our contract, um, we can give him up to 10% bonus, which doesn't raise the base. So if he got up to 10% uh, for the first year, then he would start again at the same level for the next year coming forward, like, you, like Councilman, you mentioned. So my thought would be maybe we should try to give a bonus uh, for the first year that we missed um, up to 10%, uh, which would be up to 25,000. I'm not saying it should be 25, but up to that. And then we could analyze this current year, try to get some more information about comparables around the country, look at the around here. Um, I do agree that you've done a fantastic job, Mr. Jordan. I, I, having been here on both before and after, it's night and day difference. So it's just I'm concerned that we're getting to a level where we're really beyond uh, your counterparts in the Clark County system and the city of Las Vegas system, and and uh, we, we don't want to we want to keep it a range where um, um, it's comparable. Anyway, that would be my proposal: is maybe consider doing a bonus uh, for that first year today, um, and then looking forward, maybe in January coming back and looking at this year. But meanwhile, we have to start establishing some criteria going forward, as, as Commissioner Bruni said. Um, because that's, that's obviously we want to have goals, and then we can com see how you're doing. So that, that's my thought. Commissioner Disney. No, it's, open, it's open debate. You can have multiple comments. Okay. Um, I think that, you know, if you look at bonuses over here and you look at salaries over here, you know, you have to differentiate that. See, he's going to get bonuses, or at least he's entitled to bonuses almost automatically if he's doing a good job. I'm talking about... The, the base salary aspect of it, which is different. His base, first of all, we do need to do some research, you know, on our part, uh, some of you, in terms of what, what the market is paying across the country, okay? Because right from the moment he came here and when I saw his salary, I knew right then and there we were going to have this issue because he had to have taken the position at a salary that is lower than the standard rate across the country. Right from jump, he comes in at a disadvantage. Now we say to him, okay, above and beyond that, you know, you go ahead and get everything else in order, and we'll talk about you later on. And then we get to later on, we talk about bonuses, which he's going to get any damn way. You see, we need to be rewarding or we're losing. I mean, it's just flat out. And I, I don't think we can afford to lose him. I don't think we can afford to dismantle a solid team. Every one of his team persons are in position and are turning out like you're turning out uh, meat in a factory. I mean, they're, they're performing. And so therefore, I don't think that we can, can uh, really put ourselves in, in, in a position of jeopardizing all that work and all that time. Had he come in at the national competitive rate, then that would have been a different story. But he came in under me. So now we're saying, okay, you came in under, but we'll, we'll analyze. Well, we will approve the bonus, which you're going to get any damn way, you see, and we've done something. I don't think we've done anything. You know, I think that, that the, the results of his work should be commensurate with what we pay him and what the, the national rate is going around. If you don't know the national rate, okay, educate yourself, and I understand that. But I don't think that we should settle on on just confirming the bonus he's going to get anyway. That's Thank it. you, Commissioner Disney. Commissioner Churchill. Yeah. And then we're going to go to legal counsel. Okay. Uh, I agree with what you're saying. Uh, but seeing as that it's, uh, it's October and we're talking two months to January, um, you know, I, I don't think we're, we're going to going to let this gentleman wait that long to get those numbers that uh, Commissioner Bruni wants and that I would want. Now, if we left this, uh, this meeting uh, asking you to wait on everything, then uh, I think that would be somewhat disrespectful. You know, um, so, uh, yeah, I don't think it's a big deal. I could be quite honest with you. I don't think you're looking for that, you know. But I would agree with um, my commissioner friend, Tegelblum, 
that we uh, go ahead and approve a bonus now to show our appreciation for what you've done and get those metrics, those numbers together in a couple of months uh, in January and um, just keep on moving forward. We'll be right back on track then. That would be uh, my suggestion. Legal. So I'd like to start with addressing Commissioner Bruni first because I think her conversation uh, began the discussion regarding what is appropriate market-wise and not having that market information. And I think this also dovetails into what Commissioner uh, Desmond said and Vice Chair Sagerbloom also <coughs> hinted at. The evaluation should not be relegated to what is happening in Nevada. <coughs> Because Nevada, especially Southern Nevada, only has one housing authority, and that's this regional housing authority. The, act, the market study would be one that includes housing authorities across the nation. And the reason I say that, uh, Vice Chair Sagerbloom, because your point is well taken. I represent other public agencies within the state, and those comments would be dead on. And same with you, Commissioner Bruni. But... <coughs> As you know, the Southern Nevada Regional Housing Authority does not receive a penny of taxpayer money from the state of Nevada. We're HUD funded. We're federally funded. And so to compare apples to apples, you would look at other housing authorities of similar size. So for example, if you were to look at Atlanta or Chicago or Los Angeles, those would be housing authorities. Now you'd have to compare the size, size of public housing units, Section 8 vouchers, but you would use that. Uh, keeping in mind, the Southern Nevada Regional Housing Authority is a combination of several housing authorities. It was the first in the nation. I remember when HUD and, and perhaps uh, Vice Chair Sagerbloom may remember this as well, when HUD came around to North Las Vegas Housing Authority, a city in Clark County, attempting to marshal support for this regional housing authority. And then, of course, in 2009, 2010, we ended up with the regulation change and here now we have the Southern Nevada Regional Housing Authority. So the proper comp class study, if you want to use that, or market study would be looking at federally funded public housing authorities, not restricting yourself to what the city of Las Vegas may do, because that is a housing that's a agency that's a political subdivision of the state that depends on ad valorem taxes within Las Vegas or City of Henderson or North Las Vegas, and then, of course, federal uh, state funds. That's not where we get our funding, and it's not an appropriate way of looking at what is the market for executive directors. So hopefully uh, we can put all that information in front of the board. Certainly I can, uh, not that I would be doing it, but certainly Ms. Waters, uh, Mr. Heron, uh, even uh, Mr. Jordan can grab that information and then provide it to the board. And if this is a, an attempt of at least addressing the bonus at this point and then looking at that information once you have it in front of you so you can make a more informed decision on what the uh, base salary adjustment should be, uh, Commissioner Desmond, that can be done. I'm getting, uh, unless I'm reading the tea leaves wrong, I think Mr. Jordan is willing to wait and allow the board to do that. And so since he's, he's willing to do so, and that doesn't put you in a, no one's screaming breach of contract at this point, point, then that gives the board a chance to look at how it wants to measure performance. I gave some, I threw out some suggestions already and uh, make this decision in two or three months, like Commissioner uh, Vice Chair Sagerbloom said, sometime in January. But at least you'd have the benefit of all that information. He'd have the bonus. Then you could readjust his base salary within the sole discretion of the board, it would be retroactive. Keep in mind, I want the board to be aware of that because the board had the obligation to do this 90 days from his anniversary the first year. So it would be retroactive all the way back over now 18 months. By that time, it would be 24 months. And then your 23 would be retroactive a full year. So you'd have one retroactive base salary adjustment for a year, and for two years, with the additional for the one year, whatever that difference would be. Thank you for that. And I actually want to remind the board <clears throat> that during the transition period when we had one member step off who was chairing and then me being elected to the board, that is where all of this really came to a head, really. That's, that's the nucleus of, you know, where we are now. 
Um, I think that where we started, as you heard, and I won't you know, go back over some of the points that were made by our members, but we were in turmoil here, like we were in turmoil. Um, at that time, I was the vice chair. I was joining weekly calls with the HUD every, every Friday at 9.30 in the morning, going through issue or what was perceived by them as to an issue, issue by issue, of, of things that needed to be addressed and improved. We enlist, um, for lack of a better term, uh, a recruiter or a headhunter to find us an executive director. In the interim, we had an overseer, almost of a trustee, if you will, overseeing the, the operations of the housing authority came in. A lot of people left during that time period as well. Um, and he ultimately led us to this recruiter. We went through a long, arduous process of identifying who would be the best fit for the Southern Nevada Regional Housing Authority. And after what it had to be at least a half a dozen uh, applicants or more, we sat, down we sat down individually, hours upon hours with each candidate. And after thoroughly evaluating and analyzing who would be the best fit for this agency, we ultimately and collectively landed on Director Jordan. From that point of bringing him on, I can definitely say without no, no doubt in my mind that this agency has done exceedingly above what I even thought it would be because it was just so much chaos and so much turmoil uh, within these walls and outside of these walls. So with that, I would definitely say that, you know, Director Jordan has already earned my respect and the respect of many members throughout our community, not only uh, our landlord community. We had, you know, raving reviews from, you know, the, the initial gathering of landlords to so identifying ways that we can get our folks housed to so identifying ways uh, to develop more units. So in being fair, but also critical of where, you know, Director Jordan, I think that he's taken us to this next level and I am only, uh, you know, even more excited to see where he's going to take us in the future. But it seems like there is a dis you know a disagreement of the pathway forward. Um, I I I certainly respect you know the desire to have more information so that we you can have more of a, a measuring stick, if you will, to identify just how far we've gone. Uh, but I also will say that you know time is ticking. Uh, January is going to be here before we know it. The 90 day what would be the 90 day mark that we would have to start to get to January? Like we'll have to look at that date. So we're already past the start date. Okay, so we're behind the eight ball already. So what I think, with our next meeting being November 16th, I think today we take no action, no action at all. Uh, I think that we come back after, you know, looking at a market study of, you know, what executive directors around the country are doing. That will, I know that we can't meet, but at least we can talk to one or two of us. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, we can't have a walking quorum here, and we have to be, you know, cognizant of the open meeting law. But I do think we'll work with Fred uh, to also take a look at, you know, our, our finances and also uh, look at seeing what we can do by the November 16th meeting. Uh, and, and by then, I would hope that members would have had the ability to, to do some research and also thoroughly uh, ask yourself and evaluate uh, where do you, where do we want to go with this agency? Right now, uh, we're rolling. We have pro we just approved millions of dollars of development today, and we have a lot on the horizon. Uh, even partnering with our different municipalities, there's a lot happening. Uh, so I think that we should really just take some time to reflect on on what we would like to do. I know that uh, the annual s uh, adjustment for our staff uh, through the negotiations that was had recently. And I commend Director Jordan for not, uh, you know, for not going after his salary at a time to where employees were needing to be, you know, uh, supported financially. And uh, they had a great contract. But they also have a reopener coming up soon. Mm -hmm. uh, and we don't want to be in a position where we're discussing his salary mm -hmm. uh, when we need him to be focused on, you know, working with, you know, our finance team to identify during the negotiations how we're going to continue to take care of our employees and keep the morale high. Uh, so if the board would be amenable to it, I would ask for, you know, us to take action on the, at the November 16th meeting. And yes. I, I agree. I agree uh, with what you're saying, you know, 
And I think that, that one month, month period, next meeting, fine. Uh, I would like to say, though, that, that as we're looking at what the national uh, uh, operations are calling for, that we look in terms of, of bringing the director, you know, up to date, you know, that, that we really, we don't think in terms of piecemealing, you know, bring him up and let's roll. And I think what you're suggesting is, is excellent. I subscribe to it 100% because then we, we have a better position to talk from when everybody has had a chance to, to get a little more informed. And, and I agree. So what you're recommending, I'm 100% on board. And I want everyone to remember, again, like our legal counsel stated, we're making up for two years now. Right. That's, that's so why I'm saying what I'm saying. Technically, there will be two different thought processes that you need to have with this contract. Uh, Director, Br I mean, uh, Commissioner Bruni. Thank you. Um, if I can try to synthesize the conversation, thinking about the timeline, it sounds like there is an agreement that, you know, moving forward, it'd be great to have more metrics and, you know, more national data. And so I wonder if we couldn't, or it sounds like also there, there's maybe an openness to approving a bonus today. Um, so approving a bonus today and then in November coming back with the data to help inform the conversation that will begin for the next annual review. Okay. I, I, I disapprove. I don't know Craig. if I'm out, but no, I, I really don't. Listen, I'm not trying to be biased or anything, but come on, guys. What are the, at least me, what are the job you ever worked on where you're supposed to get a raise or a bonus? You didn't do it. Most of us, 99% of us will quit. And the reality is, we still got some problems with this housing authority. Nobody's perfect because we're human. But the reality is, and he didn't pay me, he, didn't, he sacrificed for us. We look better. We have a better reputation. And you can actively see it. I know you got some problems, but just think about when some of you all came to complain. Some of you all did not even get the answers addressed. This man is making sure they get addressed. And he's not God. He doesn't know everything. But let's just be fair and think about how you would want to be treated if you've been working. Because I would not work if they didn't pay me my raise the next year. i walk off so quick I wouldn't even give him a pink slip. I'd be gone. Commissioner Craig. That's all I got to say. I'm sorry. No, no, no. You're good. We, it's open debate, like I said. Uh, but um, with Director, Director Jordan, well, legal, is it possible... Can we work through you and our finance department to get the information uh, about re, um, nationwide um, similarities in, in, in salaries? Can we, can we look nationwide for our executive director's salary? In terms of salaries, I don't think that's a problem whatsoever. Well, just work. the information? Yeah, we can get the information to you. Um, the only thing I may not be able to find out, and I'm trying to look at Commissioner Bruni as well, I can see everyone else. Mr. Desmond's plaque is uh, obscuring mm -hmm. your view. The, uh, I may not have access to the actual contracts underlying their positions, but I would probably be able to find out salary amounts. So, that's helpful. Uh, right, and I, can, and I can figure out size. That's, that's something we can figure out. And, I'll, and it would it be possible to have that, say, in the next two weeks? Yes. For okay. Me, I, mean, I can't speak for Mr. Heron or for Mr. Ms. Waters. Okay. Okay. I say one more thing. See, one second, there, Mr. There's Commissioner a confusion. Dishman. I have one oh, more. Okay. I have one more uh, question, um, Director Jordan. Would you be okay allowing the board the time to do the research? Absolutely. I, I uh, again, I serve at the pleasure of the board. Uh, I'm, I'm happy being here. Uh, I think we've accomplished a lot. One of the things I just want to make clear about metrics. Um, I want to make sure that we understand that as much as how many units we have filled or how many work orders we do, there's a plethora of other things that this position does. And, and I just want to make it clear, as we talk about some of the highlights in my review, and as Mr. Parker clearly indicated, it really depends on what you're looking for. If you're looking for someone to make sure we, we, we do work orders and we fill units and we pay bills, um, and I guess in a nutshell, if you're looking to be a public housing agency, that's what you had when I walked in the door. We are a premier affordable housing organization. 
where we collaborate, we partner, we fill units, we we uh, do work orders, and so I just want to, you know, when as Commissioner said, well, what are the metrics? Um, if we went back to that very first slide, in my opinion, the metrics are very clear. We had an awful reputation. We weren't answering phones. We 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 um, didn't communicate well. We had poor service delivery. Those are clear metrics, in my opinion. And so to the extent, and I also want to say that we're talking two years now. And I, I welcome, I've worked for different boards in different places. I welcome the opportunity to have a more robust goal setting process for the year of 24. But when we talk about metrics now, we, no matter what I come up with, I got two months to get it done, which will be complete. So in my opinion, the two years, we're two months shy of going through two years, but clearly understand if that's the wish of the board to establish these. And again, I've done this long enough to know these are very attainable and reachable goals. But if there's something else that we talk about and we measure, but Mr. Chair, to answer your question, I have full confidence that the board will come up with the right decision. And I, can I wait? Sure, I can wait. Just until November. So, uh, Chairman, I appreciate it again. Uh, Teddy Parker. One point that Mr. Jordan just raised, and I want everybody to be aware of this, cognizant of this. The contractual obligation for the board was to actually provide the guidelines within 90 days of the actual evaluation. So his point, and I think this goes back to something that Commissioner Craig and Commissioner Desmond both said, to create the evaluation tool after the fact is, is prejudicial to the person you're judging. So I think you can only look at it prospectively and to, going forward. So the, the point being is after you've run the race, you can't say, listen, if you only first and second people are considered. You've got to tell people before they start the race that only the first and second people will be considered for trophies, whatever the case may be, just using that as a very simple example. So the presentation that Mr. Jordan just presented provided what he would consider to be a way of evaluating his performance. So I would suggest throwing in something that's something that we should have said 90 days beforehand you can't do at this point contractually. You're just in all fairness to the board and fairness to Mr. Uh, Jordan. Commissioner Bruni. Thank you, Chair. And I completely agree, Mr. Parker, and that's why I said moving forward, because yes. as I read five, you know, this hasn't been done to no fault. You know, we were just in crisis management. I'm just saying moving forward, we're clearly not in, um, we're not in compliance with our own uh, contract. And so we need to, for the next you know, Absolutely. prospective evaluation, come up with something. So, and again, I'm, and Mr. Jordan, I mean, um, you know, I think there's, there are data points in what you already presented. Like you mentioned landlords. So how many landlords do we have now? Like we know those numbers. And so again, I'm just looking for at some point what's a baseline and then we can see year over year what the growth is. I do not want this to be punitive. I hope that didn't come across that way. Uh, again, I, I started my comments saying that I've enjoyed working with you, and I think that you're doing a great job, which is evidenced in the incredible presentation that you put together for the record. Uh, we have Commissioner Craig and then Vice Chair Sigmund. I'm going to be nice and say this has been a learning experience. But you know, inflation has increased. This man came from Cal. He was in some, listen, I'm from Indianapolis. He came from a larger city. Chicago, California, he has that experience. And my point about it is, is that we're acting funny about the money, but the reality is, is that I'm just, I just think it's not fair. I'm just gonna call it out, whatever it is, because we have been negligent. And I don't know if legally he could sue us, because now everybody, excuse me, in this term, that grandmammy knows we, the board did not do what they should have done. And if he does not want to sue us, he's kinder than me because I would take us to court. I'm just going to call it. Now you're going to penalize me. I've done all this. You all were a house that was on fire. I've helped the Craig. Out. And then you're penalizing me. Commissioner Craig, okay. I'll just ask you to be mindful uh, that 
we have had some things addressed by our legal counsel. I see him writing judicial. <laughs> I'm not asking for so. I'm just all I'm saying is you. that it's it, it's kind enough that he's not doing that, and I'm not you. asking to be sued. Just the point about think about yourselves yeah. how you feel. Yeah, thank you. This so uh, we'll, what we will have right now is we'll have uh, just the final comments. I know we have Commissioner Vice Chair Segerblum. I want to say something, Commissioner Churchill. And what we'll do is we'll table this item. And Commissioner, I would like actually prefer a motion to the table and bring it out at another meeting. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I would like to uh, leave here before dark. Okay? <laughs> so th that's my goal today. We got security. Yeah, and, and, you know, I, I, I don't agree with my, my fellow commissioner here on my left only because to me this isn't about money. All right? This is about us getting on the same page and getting that foundation set to go forward now. Uh, that's all it's about with me. You know, I have absolutely no problem with your performance, and you know that. You know, I just want to make sure that we're all comfortable over here going forward. That's the only reason why uh, I think we suggested all of that. Thank you. Uh, Vice Chair Segerblum. I'd make a motion to table. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. I'll second. We have a motion by Vice Chair Segerblum, a second by... Uh, Commissioner Bruni, any discussion on the motion at table? Yes. We have discussion. The discussion is I, w I had one last thing I wanted to say. It was a motion made before you said it. <laughs> oh, boy. But you can still have your comments. The, uh -oh. the motion is as still As long open. as I can get a chance to, to make my last comment, I agree with everything else. Go ahead. Okay. Well, my last comment is that I think that... Um, we need to make certain that the commissioners understand the difference between the bonus and the salary. That's an issue as evidenced right now because uh, uh, she made the statement, well, I, I vote to give him his bonus. Well, he's going to get the bonus. That's irrelevant. He's going to get the bonus. That's not an issue, so I don't want that to be thrown out there like we're doing something because they're not doing the damn thing. See, now, as far as your comment about, well, it's not about money. That's bull crap. You know, when you go in your door, you know, you're not on, 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 on the payroll. If you're on the payroll and, you, and this is your livelihood, then your attitude would be different. It would have to be, or you'd be a fool. And I'm not, I'm not saying you're, because I, I know better than that. I know it does, it is about money. You know, when you get up here and work, and especially if you work hard and hard and hard, and you can see results. You know, we've got a new uh, support services director. We've got a new deputy commissioner. I mean, deputy uh, executive directors. We've got some good, strong people that are doing great jobs, all these people, forming a team. Now, he did get stuck with Fred. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm just kidding, Fred. No, but, but, all right. No, but the point is that it takes time to put together a good team. And the hardest thing in the world to do which is why I'm going to shut up after this. The hardest thing in the world to do is to sit there, you see, while everybody's debating your salary, and you have to be nice and say, well, yeah, okay, well, I'm going to wait that. And you know inside when something's right, when something's fair, you know, and when something's being nonproductive. And so I don't, anything that, that Director Jordan has to say, I'm, to me, that, I'm not even paying attention to that. Because I know if I was in the same position, you know, you know you're going to say, well, yeah, well, okay, well, I'll, I'll wait, and blah, blah, blah. But, you know, inside you're burning up because you work your butt off and you made sure that everybody else was taken care of. Everybody. And now you're supposed to do it because it's a good thing in the community? That's nonsense. That's ridiculous. See? So, sign it off. All right. Uh, we have a motion properly second. Is there any other discussion? I'm abstaining. Go ahead. Uh, just very quickly again. Um, I have to tell you, whatever I say over here in open session isn't bull crap, okay? Because we're only talking about a month or two here, all right? And if you base a bonus on a previous salary, then you really, if you give him a bonus today, you really give him less than what he's entitled to. So, you know, I think he could afford, excuse me, I, I, I think uh, Mr. Lewis uh, agrees with what we're doing, and uh, you know, let's move forward on this. I think we're all on the same page. It all depends how we're looking, how we get through that door. 
All right, so we have a motion and second. Uh, if there's no further discussion, is there any other discussion? Got anything to say? I just want to agree with uh, Commissioner Desmond and Commissioner Craig. Okay. So I don't. I, I think that Mr. Jordan has done a great job, and he's already waited. And I don't understand what, what what else, what other data we need other than what he's already had in his presentation. So from this point, and thank you for the question. From this point, we're going to go back, take a look at comparable salaries across the country, and at our next meeting, there will be. Um, included on the agenda uh, a salary recommendation that's our next vote all right we have a motion and a second is there any other discussion here and seeing none all in favor aye. aye any abstain i abstain anyone oppose maybe i'm opposed i'm opposed i didn't mean abstain i'm opposed all right let the record show that we have one two three four five six in favor one abstention no oppose no opposition Oh, excuse me, not abstain, opposition. All right, uh, this concludes our posted agenda. We'll now move on to the second period uh, for citizens' participation. Um, is there anyone willing to come up at this time for public comment? Oh, are there any new business items before we have public partic participation? All right. No, any new business? Okay. We'll now hear from uh, Mary Mitchell, Stephanie Hall. Please come forward, state your name for the record again. You'll be limited to three minutes. Thank you. Hello, good afternoon, commissioners, um, Chairperson Mr. Jordan. My name is Stephanie Mitchell Anthony. This is my mother, Mary Mitchell, my husband, Anton Anthony. Here, you guys have seen me before uh, some months ago. I'm here on behalf of my mother, but before I go into why I'm here for my mother, I see all the great things that you guys are doing in the Housing Authority, and I definitely am glad I got an opportunity to sit in on this. My mother has been a victim of the chaos and some of the things that has went on and fell through the cracks over the last couple years. Uh, my mother has had her voucher for 30 years, only lived in two properties, moved her voucher down here 10 years. Years ago but before I go into that I'm asking that the commissioners and mr. Jordan um, my mother's uh, voucher has been canceled reinstated I have been in this um, this is my husband Anton Anthony he is a retired senior chief petty officer in government 30 years I have been in this community serving this community for 27 years <clears throat> this is me and my husband and my family here um, opening up businesses in Summerlin. I've been in Henderson. I've been on the Las Vegas Metro Police Department because I want you guys to know who I am. Before I came in, I was just my mother's daughter. But now I have to reach on the fact that I am a community leader. I have bring in, been bringing jobs here for the last 25 years as an entrepreneur. I've received things from Las Vegas um, <clears throat> from Steve Sisolak. Who else? Just Heller, uh, <clears throat> Senator Heller. Just so many accolades, guys. I brought this here just so you guys can see that I've been an active member of this community. I'm asking that the community service my mother, okay? Her voucher <clears throat> was uh, mixed up with another Mary Mitchell. And because of it being mixed up, someone from the Housing Authority called my mother's property management and said that she had to move. They called the property management and told them that my mother would be moving. My mother did not know until the, the uh, property management called and said, are you moving this weekend? They got her mixed up with another Mary Mitchell, Mary E. Mitchell. She's had her voucher for 30 years. She was married to my father for 50 years. My father died seven years ago. I stepped back from the community to take care of my mother. With that being said, her voucher is the only thing that her and my father share, and now she doesn't have it anymore. It's all she has. Now, me and my husband are established. We can go buy her a house, her forever home. She will not allow us to do it. She wants her voucher. She's on a fixed income. She wants her voucher, and it's been canceled. She has not received a letter from the Housing Authority canceling it. We did um, find this out last week, so it is on your desk, Mr. Jordan, waiting. Okay, thank you. Thank you. 
And we ask that you just uh, hang tight. He'll, he'll, he'll Thank address you. you after the meeting. Uh, next up, we have Shamoya Lacey. Good afternoon. My name is Shamoya Lacey. Once again, I'm here um, with concerns about the accountability of the Southern Nevada Regional Housing Authority, board members, um, directors. Um, it's, it appalls me how we sit up here and we're discussing his, his pay, but things in the community has not even been dealt with. Okay, he's working within the system of which you guys, but should not show with us as residents, uh, property managers, um, uh, things that you guys offer, it, it's not showing to us. We don't see the difference. I mean, we see you guys up here debating on uh, should he be here, what he's doing, how he's doing it, just like this young lady. She got issues going on with her. My issues still haven't been attended to, and I'm pretty sure a couple other people that's going to get up here with these blue cards, None of nothing is changing with us as residents. We're not seeing the change. We're not even experiencing it. We're still leaving here day after day with the same situations, dealing with the property managers, paperwork not being... Uh, administer to us on time, but it's like, oh, it's okay, but then you want to penalize us the first moment that we don't get a piece of paper, or we don't know that we're in court for eviction. The eviction rate is high, and, oh, you're, you're, you're leasing, you're, you're putting people in places, but the same way you're putting them out for no reason. So putting them in there and them getting kicked right back out, what, it, what are we accomplishing? What is it doing for us as a community, as a whole? How are we elevating from that? How are we graduating from needing the system to provide for us? Where's the resources to help us be efficient on our own and continue to do that so we don't have to be kicked out because, oh, we didn't understand this or we didn't get this paperwork or the property manager wasn't there or the office is only open one day out there. Let, let's deal with some of the issues that's in the past. That's the ones that are being presented now are just being piled on, on the ones that the, the cover has been, the blinds have been closed on. We have issue after issue after issue that has not been dealt with, and it's still more coming forth. And we don't still even have the answers to us. Our children, some of us have children that are homeless right now due to the neglect of housing authority members that were not attentive to paperwork. My case alone, I've proved on several occasions where paperwork was not sent to me, dates were wrong, names and things have been mixed up, but that still hasn't been looked into. It's like, oh, okay, she's out. She's evicted. We don't have to worry about her. No, I'm not going anywhere, and I'm going to keep pressing the issue and pressing the bar for myself and the community. Thank you, guys. Uh, Christopher Johnson. Hi, my name is Christopher Johnson. And uh, basically, I was placed on disability from an accident, and I applied in the housing authority in 2020. So since then, when I first started, I was like probably in the hundreds on the waiting list. And as of now, I, you know, I applied for three, three places on the waiting list. And I imagine I speak for myself and others, but <clears throat> as of now, I'm like almost 10,000. So I've been in contact with housing authority through emails and whatnot. And um, basically, all they could tell me is that there's no unusual time for a wait list, and people with higher preferences come before you. So basically, you know, I, I deserve an equal, equal right to housing just like everyone else, you know. So if there's people with higher preferences than me, then there's always gonna be people with higher preferences than me. Instead of, as time goes by, getting closer to getting housing, I just keep getting pushed further back, you know, and I just feel like there should be an unusual time for housing being on the wait list, you know, because there's always going to be people moving here with higher preferences. So basically, people like me are just going to keep getting pushed further and further down the line and eventually never get housing because I'm like 10,000 now. But when I first started on housing, I was like in the hundreds. So I'm just trying to get something resolved with that because they always have the same, same answer for the same question. Higher preferences and there's no unusual wait time. So, I mean, I imagine there's a lot of people that don't have higher preferences and they're just like me and just can't get housing, you know, because that's what I, I need housing just like everyone else. And I just feel like that's an equal right, you know. So if something could be done with the higher preferences, you know, I understand that part, but the unusual wait time as well, you know, and that's it. Thank you. Thank you. 
Uh, we we'll ask that you also hang tight. Somebody meet, should be able to talk to you after the meeting. Uh, next up, we have uh, Rick Rosen. Hi, I'm Rick Rosen from uh, Rue on Earl, and I filled out the card so one is a preemptive uh, just in case. Um, I sat through the entire meeting and heard about uh, a deadline that was passed not once but twice a deadline that concerns mr. Jordan and his compensation I don't think anybody wants to deny him that compensation but who dropped that ball who if there's somebody from his side who is it and have they been reprimanded or retrained if it's somebody that's still employed or, or, or in charge of that where did where is that accountability for two, not one, and I, I, I mean, I think there's probably blame on both sides of that issue. If I knew I had a raise coming and it was dependent upon a, an evaluation of me, and they, you knew that evaluation had not been accomplished, why not? Why why wasn't that flag raised two years ago? So wherever that wherever that is, that seems to be a problem that has not been addressed at least at this meeting, and. Uh, um, I, I'm not certain why, and I think that's for the board to, to, to figure out why or who, whom is responsible. But somebody's responsible, and somebody needs to stand up and take, take the accountability for that and take the blame, and, and, and you know, let's fix it going forward. But I think that's, uh, that's a serious issue to, to miss that deadline two years in a row. So that's my say. Thank you. Next up we have... Robert Bush, Reverend Bush. Good afternoon, Commissioner, and to uh, all of the commissioners and Executive Director uh, uh, Jordan. Um, I grew up in Marble Manor. Um, my auntie lived off of Morgan, and so, and I understand the plans um, for Marble Manor, but the, but this whole. Uh, uh, public housing thing is important to me and as a matter of fact we represent uh, some of the uh, folks that are in the room uh, our organization is National Action Network for those that don't know it's the organization that was founded by Reverend Al Sharpton and I think part of some of what I'm hearing is that you guys at the Commission are at the 35,000 foot level the directors at the 25,000 foot level, but on the ground level, a lot of the challenges aren't being fixed. And so the kind of uh, things that we're dealing with is not just the rudeness of the, the, the uh, people when they call in, but also the conditions on the ground level, where I have a complaint about a parent uh, saying her kid is playing with roaches, like their pets, and the mildew and the mold and when I was growing up, we could go out in the backyard in Marble Manor and play football and you know, run, but they can't do that anymore because of the conditions of the grounds. And so what I would like to see, and it was an excellent presentation by uh, Executive Director Jordan, but I would like to see also in that presentation is not just serving at the a pleasure of the commission, but serving at the pleasure also of the people. And if you work on the people from the ground up, then I think everything would work out all right. I thank you, Commissioner McCurdy, for opening the door to Director Jordan Weave. Uh, our community coalition hasn't met yet, but we're but but Commissioner uh, Dur McCurdy and also Director Jordan have opened the door for the people to come in and to be able to talk about some of the challenges that are being fixed. And so we're looking forward to, um, to that opportunity and to be able to make some significant um, differences in the community and then reporting back to you all on, on uh, exactly how the changes are being made. Um, we believe in going from demonstration to legislation and legislation in this particular case is fixing the problems and the challenges that are affecting the community. And so I think that, um, that Director Jordan has been very, very amenable to opening the door for us, and we're planning on making a difference, and I hope that you all would support us. Thank you. 
Thank you. Next up, we have Adam Good. Good afternoon to all of you. I know all of you have hard job to do when it comes to financing. Me and two partners, we have three houses, last 15 years with Section 8. Every other year, the, the Section 8 tenant majority are great people. All of us, we have a responsibility morally to take care of our poor people. You folks have a power. I left off with the damage of $12,000. I've been drugged to the court. The judge make a decision, cut it on one third, and then she have attorney, Nevada legal, appeal it. I cannot go to appeal at court. I have to hire a court lawyer and then go back to the court and then end up with a judgment of 4,500, even doesn't pay for painting to repair a house. First time in 15 years, the tenant landlord liaison, Mrs. Lewis, answered my call to provide her with the actual document, what we lost, how we can pay our mortgage. The landlord, they are escaping. We have a shortage because not you, whoever policy you have, treat the landlord, small one especially, we are not a criminal, we have a mortgage, we have tax, we have insurance. Can we pay half of rent, half of the mortgage? Did they accept it from us? No, they penalize us 10% penalty. 30 days, they take your property. Solution is, in my opinion, I have four degree, I read and write four languages, including Italian and English. I'm an international consultant. I'm retired. I devoted my life to be Christ's advocate for our poor people. Do not give eviction. When tenant destroy the house, you have no choice. Two months is empty, you get another one, and they pay half of their, their obligation. How I can pay the mortgage? Gentlemen, you have power. When our government gives I'm sorry. $110 million <clears throat> to foreign countries, why you don't get 10% of this to help? That, that concludes your testimony at this yeah, point. In this country, sir. Thank you so much. If you want to hang tight and just wait, uh, if you want to get some of those questions answered, but that concludes your, your, the time. That's all the time you have. Thank you so much for coming out today. Why you don't give us a time, the landlord, to talk to you, to tell you what is the problem we have? Yes, sir. So if you just hang tight after the meeting, you can have a conversation to one of the team members. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for showing up today. Phyllis Carpenter. Good afternoon. So um, about a week and a half ago, I got an email. Somebody pulled my medical records. It wasn't me. Um, so I told you the last time I was here about the dead body in the apartment that I was moved into from the mold. Um, that was, and it was not properly cleaned. I ended up getting MRSA from, because it was airborne. They didn't, yeah. And um, I have to go to wound care. I've been to the hospital. I was in the hospital for four days. They wanted to keep me eight. Um, I told them, I, I told you guys I had been being bit last time I was here. Um, the regular pest control had came around. He said it was carpet beetles. 
Um, they said that they was going to treat it. They never did. Now they're saying there's not even carpet beetles. I don't know what is biting me, but it's not, it's not fair. Okay, so then they, they, they offered me an apartment in a marble manner, and um, I went and I looked at it last Friday. They gave me the offer on Monday or Tuesday. I went and I accepted it. She gave me the keys, but I hadn't signed the lease yet. Um, I had, so yesterday I was on the phone with Lee Quick and she, and I told her, look, I don't want to take anything from that apartment if there's bugs in it. Why would I take my belongings to an apartment that's not contaminated and contaminated? I mean, that's just asinine to me. And she told me that if I didn't, that they can't hold it. And I understand that they can't hold it, but you can't expect me to take it to the new apartment. And so she told me that they was going to that they could pull the the marble manor and i would have nothing because because they moved me from bad to worse to worse i'm i'm not getting it okay so then i was in a weekly a total of i believe 16 weeks for three weeks it, it was twenty one hundred dollars for the weekly they was paying me 441 a week for every week that i've been out They've paid about fifteen thousand dollars. Now, when I was in Mar when I was in Sartini, the apartment behind me was empty and being rehabbed. I said I wanted to stay at Sartini. They they made me go to Schaefer. That wasn't my choice. They, they told me I had to go to Schaefer. Okay, and altogether they paid about fifteen thousand dollars, all because I was organizing the tenants so that we have more say so in our community, and that isn't fair. It, it, it's not fair, and I'm sorry, I'm having an anxiety attack. Um, it's not fair. I don't even know what to say other than, you know, I try to, to organize the tenants so that we have say so in, in, in our community. They, he doesn't even let us have a seat at the table. The, the, the annuals in the five years, they've been using the same signature since 2017. Thank you so much. That, that completes your time. Thank you so much for coming today. Um, if there are no further public comment at this time, uh, this is there any other public comment at this time? All right, this meeting is adjourned.